Good morning. Uh, welcome to this first devotional, uh, which will be a series of devotionals over the next couple of weeks. Um, as I mentioned in my chat uh, with Pastor Johnson last week, the video that the two of us made together, uh, this is really an opportunity um, for me to delve a little bit deeper into my own spiritual life, but also to invite you all uh, along in that process as well over the next couple of weeks. And hopefully this is a meaningful experience for you all um, as we journey together in this time of physical distancing, uh, this time in which we, we might not be able to be uh, physically in the same room, but looking for alternative ways to connect. Um, so as you might be able to tell this morning, uh, from my background, I'm not indoors, um, but I'm actually outside sitting on our balcony. And uh, over the last couple of mornings, I've actually awoke with the smell of fresh rainfall. Um, it's spring here uh, and, and uh, um, we have some green area outside of, our, outside of our condo where we live. And so just this rich smell of rain. Um, and one of the most vivid memories growing up um, or around smell for me at least was the smell of like fresh cut grass with the smell of rain uh, during the late spring months. So crisp mornings uh, when the temperature is still relatively uh, kind of like today. Um, this morning, Wednesday, uh, around 50, 50 degrees this morning. Crisp mornings, dewy, damp grass, and just this rich smell of, of rain uh, on, on the ground. So I'd like you to take a minute and, and if you could think of a memory related to smell. It could be one memory that was very recent or one long ago. Uh, it could be a positive experience or maybe a negative memory that's associated with smell. So uh, while you do that, I'm going to take a quick uh, sip from my cup of coffee here this morning. Uh, and you can go ahead and pause the video at this time. All right, wonderful. Well, hopefully you have that, uh, have that memory, uh, hold on to that. We'll be uh, checking back with that memory here in a, in, in a couple of minutes. So um, as I prepare for Holy Week services this week, I, I looked at the lectionary readings uh, for the entire week. It's a habit of mine as I prepare for, for a sermon. Um, I'll be preaching tomorrow on Monday, Thursday. Um, the gospel reading in the lectionary for Monday of this week uh, Monday, April 6th, is John 12, 1 through 11. So I'm going to go ahead and read that, if you could join me. So six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She brought it so that it might keep for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the, when the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on the account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and believing in Jesus. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. Oh. It looks like I actually read one too many verses, but uh, we actually get a sneak peek at what's coming next. So as you probably heard me say before, the Gospel of John feels so very sensual, um, or rather sensory, not sensual. Um, it could be as well, but rather so sensory. Um, and this is namely, I feel like, due to the intimacy of the Gospel. You've heard Pastor Elizabeth, Pastor Johnson, and me preach on some of these sensory signs in the gospel over the last couple of weeks, from the woman at the well, to the man born blind, to the resurrection of Lazarus, to foot washing, which we'll experience tomorrow. Um, and this reading really isn't any different. Um, it's extremely intimate and sensory. Uh, nard, pure nard. This is a sweet smelling perfume from the far reaches of India. 
how Mary got a hold of it, who knows? Um, but it leaps out of the pages, right? Um, if Think of uh, like a bottle of perfume or maybe cologne, Axe body spray or Victoria's Secret sprays, whatever it might be. Um, but this understanding of, of perfume, even if you don't use these products, you might remember a very distinct experience um, of someone who was wearing one, whether it's a positive experience or maybe a negative experience. And now, um, I remember when just when people use these products and, and it's just a few sprays, right? We might just, you know, spray the bottle once or twice or a couple of times. Well, Mary uses an entire pound of nard, this sweet smelling perfume. It fills the entire house. Um, and so it's this sweet smelling perfume in abundance, um, which is another theme of the Gospel of John. An abundance of wine at the wedding of Cana, an abundance of grace uh, with the woman at the well, an abundance of healing with the man born blind, an abundance of life with Lazarus, an abundance of love really throughout the entire gospel. And Mary's act is an abundance for one who's worthy of this abundance. That's Jesus, right? The Messiah. And so, I, uh, you know, my next question that, that, that I'm, I'm going to delve into myself, but I would encourage you to, is, is where in your life have you experienced abundance? And what do we do with this abundance? Do we keep it for ourselves? Do we share it with others? So take a minute to reflect. I'm going to grab another sip of coffee here this morning. And you can put the video on pause now. And when you have that thought, you can come back. All right, do you have, do you have those thoughts about abundance, that time when you experience abundance? Excellent. So I want to come back to the smell, right? You know, smelling of my coffee, the smell of nard. Um, this sweet perfume is striking um, compared to the chapter before uh, of Martha's declaration that, that Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, uh, when Jesus would go to open the tomb, she said, no, Jesus, don't do it. Um, he stenches of death, reeks of death. And so, um, you know, the contrast here of the chapter before of Lazarus now to the abundance, the abundance of death, to the abundance of life with the resurrection of Lazarus, and now this abundance of smell. Smells carry us, right? The sweet ones and the pungent odors. And Mary's act isn't just about smell. As we look forward to tomorrow, Monday, Thursday, we're reminded of this act of foot washing and Jesus who washes the disciples' feet. Um, well, I think Mary does it first, right? Um, disciple to teacher. And then the teacher... Uh, does it to the disciples come afterwards in the next chapter, um, chapter 13. And so I wonder, I wonder, was Jesus moved by Mary's act to do the same? So was Jesus moved by Mary's act to anoint his feet to do the same washing of the disciples' feet in the, in the next chapter? Hmm. Well, Put the video on pause. Think about that a little bit. I'm going to have another sip of coffee. And then when you're ready, you can continue with the video. All right. Ooh, looks like a plane's coming in overhead. Hopefully you can still hear me. So I think back to this smell, it's just so foundational, right? Science tells us that the strongest memories are those that are related to a sense of smell. And I wonder how Mary and all the other disciples, even Jesus, uh, remember the day that his feet were anointed with a pound of perfume, this abundance. Was that moment marked in their lives forever? I mean, if we're able to remember these strong memories from maybe our childhood or maybe recently that are associated with smell, just how do the disciples, how does Mary, how does Jesus remember this act? Um, and how that can carry them forward um, into the future. So I want to go back to that memory that I asked you to think of at the beginning. What makes that memory so special? Something to hold on to. And if you don't think it's special, the Gospel of John continues to encourage us to find the extraordinary and the ordinary. A simple act that would mean so much more. These hidden signs uh, that we see across the Gospel of John. So take a minute reflect on that act. I'll take another sip of coffee. And then when we come back, I'll close us in prayer.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for those smells in our lives that bring us back to sweet moments. We also know that these smells in our lives bring us back to times of death. Uh, just as Martha was afraid of, of Jesus opening Lazarus's tomb for that stench of death would permeate. And yet we know in an abundance of nard, of perfume, Mary's act of anointing Jesus's feet brings us to the life that is in Jesus, which is a life of abundance. May you continue to provide an abundance for us during this time. May we continue to share that abundance with others. May you hold on to us for this day as we carry forward into the next three days of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, the vigil, and finally on the fourth day, Easter, which is the living hope of your resurrection. We ask all of this in the precious name of your son, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me on my devotion this morning. And I hope, we'll, I hope that you find this meaningful and, and I look forward to connecting with you all next week. Take care.